It's always been a very big challenge for startups, entrepreneurs, and today, when you hear the access to challenge, access to capital or funding problem, it is not even just SMEs. Uh, there was recent talk about some liquidity issues, and you have even very big companies also complaining about getting access to capital. But for many people, for those already in business, and they've grown and they have that uh, credibility and all the rest, it is not a big challenge getting the capital. But for the startups, it's a huge challenge. And even the small and medium-sized enterprises is a big challenge. And that is why the UK, GCC, and the Consolidated Bank is putting together a program like this to see how we can address the challenge when it comes to access to funding for the SMEs. So I'd like to welcome all of you here, business owners, small enterprises, banking executives, and the general public to this program. And I wouldn't waste much time as I call on Mr. Kabna Asari Wusu from Consolidated Bank Ghana to give us the opening remarks which should have been done by the chief executive of the bank, Mr. Daniel Lado. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a round of applause, please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, as he has said, my name is um, Kwabna Ousu. I'm here on behalf of the Managing Director of Consolidated Bank, Mr. Daniel Addo. Unfortunately, he was unable to make it. He's a bit under the weather. But he sends his warm greetings to all of you and best wishes. Once again, you are all welcome to this um, seminar or webinar, if you like, uh, on this very important topic, access to finance for MSMEs. I'm indeed delighted to give the opening remarks for this very important seminar. And on behalf of Consolidated Bank, I wish to express my gratitude to the organizers for selecting CBG a relatively new member of UK Chamber of Commerce as a main sponsor for this program. And to all of you here for making time to be part of this seminar. I believe by the end of this program, most of our questions around the subject of access to finance for MSMEs would have been addressed. Now, access to finance, if I may say, at the right price, the right type of finance, the packaging, structure, terms and conditions for SMEs is undoubtedly one of the major hurdles of businesses in that segment in this country for very obvious reasons. In fact, the financing may be even be available, but beyond the reach of the MSMEs. Therefore, the objective of this program is not only to present to you the available financing options, but also to help you to position your businesses to make these financing packages accessible and, of course, make the right choices. Thankfully, there are banks in the country like CBG that are inclined to nurture and support small businesses as part of their core mandate. In CBG, we believe that a strong, well-informed, 
and vibrant SME sector means a strong CBG. Because being an SME focused bank, our core mandate is to support MSMEs, leveraging on digitization and digitization in the delivery of our product offering. This, of course, is in consonance with the country's digital and industrialization agenda. Yes, times may be tough for business these days, but I wish to encourage all of us to take this program very seriously and actively participate, as there are always windows of opportunity around us. Please remember that ultimately, we, that is, all of us here, together with CBG and UK Chamber of Commerce, share a common interest. And what is that? Building strong businesses within a strong nation. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause from our director coming from CBG. And there's one thing that he said that got me excited about uh, together uh, building a strong nation. Uh, in these uh, challenging times, how do we uh, build a strong nation? Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I now invite a rep from UKGCC to give us some little remarks and we get into our discussion for today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome a representative from the UKGCC to give us uh, some little remarks. Thank you, George. Good morning, everyone. We would like to welcome you all um, to this morning's um, event. Um, as the Chamber of Commerce, the business climate or the business environment is really um, very dear to us. We do a lot of work, we do a lot of advocacy in, 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 um, for a thriving or to support a thriving or a conducive business environment for companies in Ghana. And um, one of the things, one of the issues we find through our surveys um, in terms of the business climate is access to finance. And I must add cost of financing as well. But um, today we are happy to, um, in collaboration with CBG, um, to discuss really what the real challenges are. So this uh, morning session or today's session is not your typical, you know, um, these are my products, these are the things you have to do and all of that. But we want to look at the issues and how we can all contribute in terms of um, having a fruitful discussion on filling the gap of um, access to finance. So um, on that note, I'd like to welcome you all again. I'm speaking on behalf of the executive director of the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Ajuba Chiyama, who um, unfortunately can't be with us um, this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, that's something I, and, and thank you so much for that. And that's something I always have a, a big challenge at an event when I'm asked to do, which everybody does. Then I'll plead with my guest and the audience here to move forward a little bit for the cameras and all those things. This program is uh, live on the various uh, Zoom channels as well. And then, so if you move forward or help the cameras when they are taking the shot that there are a lot of people here, you know, and those who will come late will sit at the back. So uh, I will plead with you to move forward and fill the front seats. There are a lot of seats here. And also for the guests who will come up here, they feel so connected to you. Uh, my distinguished ladies and gentlemen here, there are still a lot of seats in front here. So if you move forward, I'll be so grateful. So whilst my audience have been so grateful and understanding to move forward, I can now kick the program forward in terms of our discussion that we're going to have here. And we're going to have this discussion 
to look at access to uh, funding. And I want to invite my panelists who will join me to have this discussion. First is Mr. Michael Kwanza. He's a general manager, business banking at CBG. He has over 16 years of experience in banking, general manager for business banking at Consolidated Bank Ghana, holds a master's degree in business administration. He wants to work with Unilever as an assistant manager for taxes, pensions before joining the banking industry. Prior to joining CBG, he worked in various roles, including head of SME, head of commercial banking at Absa Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest from the banking industry, Michael Kwanza. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. I would also want to welcome another guest, Mr. Eric Afram. He's the uh, Acting Director, Financial Services Support at the Ghana Enterprise Agency. And that's a very critical uh, government agency that is helping assist SMEs in this country. He's responsible for finance and support services at the Ghana Enterprise Agency. Let's welcome our, our next guest. And thank you so much. And then also I'll be joined by Sufair Nantenza, and she'll be connecting us with us virtually to get more details about that. And I'll be your, your moderator. So without no wasting much time, I think I want to start the discussion right now. And first I will just take a preliminary comment from our guests that are in here. Let me first start with Mr. Kwanza and being in the industry, and any time that you hear issues about access to funds and all those things. But first, let me get your preliminary comments first before we start with the actual question. So, having been in this industry for 16 years, and when you see this topic, what comes up and all the rest. So, over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, George. And good morning to my distinguished audience. First, um, when we talk about MSMEs. You see, the reason why we, they, ha, they are usually challenged when it comes to financing is they are the most risky. You know, when you are assessing businesses from the corporates down, the MSMEs are most exposed to challenges and we find them as most ri risky when it comes to the assessing them in terms of credit. That's why most of the time, they are faced with a lot of challenges when it comes to financing. And over the years, the banks have um, sort of tried to understand the risks that they face and how to address these risks. So that, that's one thing that um, I think we should, we should understand first, that the risk that they are faced with, that is what makes financing difficult for them. That's what I just want you to understand before we go into the discussion. Thank Mr. you. Mr. From uh, Ghana Enterprises Agency, been doing a lot of work recently, the COVID funds, you know, and all sorts of things as well. For you, let me first get your preliminary comments as we, we discuss this whole thing about access to uh, finance for MSMEs here. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, we are all aware of uh, the importance of MSMEs to every economy in the world, especially in the developing countries. We are aware that uh, they generate about 70% uh, of GDP and then 80% uh, of employment in Ghana. In fact, a friend tells me that uh, without MSMEs, there will be no Ghana. And I, I buy into that. Um, um, uh, financing uh, is what drives business growth and then employment generation. But uh, when you come to our country here, um, the MSMEs face serious financing challenges. Uh, the banks are expected to provide the financing but uh, if you listen to my colleague panelists here, yes, you yes, talked about the risk and uh, other challenges. So what happens to the MSMEs if they don't get the financing from the banks? They will 
go to the government for support. That is why if there's any issue about financing, we uh, are very much interested. Mr. Fama, just to, just to step in a little bit, I mean, you talked about the banks and how they're struggling. I mean, that is where your institution comes in. I stand to be corrected as well. In terms of you taking the, the credit and then unlending it code to the banks to also unlend to these SMEs. What is the role or what is the Ghana Enterprises Agency also doing as well to deal with this challenge of access to uh, funding for these small and medium-sized enterprises? Okay. <clears throat> First of all, let me talk about uh, why we've been, we're established. In fact, initially, we were established as uh, the National Board for Small Scale Industries uh, to promote and grow the micro and small enterprises. But later on, uh, we're given a uh, bigger responsibility to include uh, medium enterprises as well. So our name changed to Ghana Enterprises Agency. And um, in fact, uh, basically what we are supposed to do is to provide quality business development services to MSMEs as well as uh, 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 provide access to financing uh, for MSMEs or uh, facilitate their access to uh, funding. Um, there's a very huge financing gap in Ghana. In fact, IFS puts it at... Uh, about $4.3 billion. That is for the SME ecosystem. If you even add the small m, the figure could even go very high. So, uh, in fact, this uh, issue, this challenge needs to be addressed. And that is why we have come up with uh, various interventions to see if we can uh, address like, like what because I asked this question about the the Ghana Enterprise Agency because Mr. Kwanza from CBG would be more commercially oriented and I stand to be I'll be coming to you as well you the institution as in the Ghana Enterprise Agency may have to look at playing that social good where you can get access to cheaper source of funding from the development agencies and through other projects support some of these small businesses what are, the, what are those specific products or offerings that you have in place? In fact, uh, we have a number of them. Um, in fact, a lot of them, but I will just talk about a few of them. Uh, we, have, uh, we had some funding from uh, the former EDIF, now Ezim Bank, uh, for on-lending to uh, businesses that are into products that are exportable. And it's a revolving fund which we are uh, still uh, operating. And then during the COVID period, uh, the government uh, also gave us some 600 million Ghana cities for the investment to uh, the MSMEs, which were hard hit during the period. In fact, um, we have uh, disbursed to uh, over 300,000 MSMEs so far. And then we also had another COVID fund from MasterCard Foundation. Uh, and this uh, fund, about 20,000 MSMEs have benefited. And uh, we also got another COVID-related fund from World Bank under the Ghana Economic Transformation Project. Uh, this fund is called the COVID-19 uh, response grant. In fact, this one is grant. And uh, we, the first phase, in the first phase, we, uh, in fact, 373 people benefited. And uh, uh, about 234 jobs were, new jobs were created. And due to the success, um, the World Bank gave us additional funding to disburse to about uh, 350 people. And uh, the uh, portal, application portal was closed about uh, a few weeks ago, but the disbursement is, uh, of the second phase is ongoing. Yes, under the Ghana um, Economic Transformation Project, we still have another uh, component, grant component. Uh, this one is specifically for high-growth SMEs, 
In fact, it is, it is, it's a capacity building with grants for you know, purchase of raw materials and then uh, machines, equipment. We also have, in fact, we have a lot, if you give okay, me so, time. To but but talk about these, these products and this uh, fund are widespread as they are national in nature. Yes. And even maybe a Joamansa from Antiman Kibi, if she has a good project, she can get access or got access to those funds. Oh, yes. In fact, we have even simplified the process. Mm. So, in fact, to be a bit more transparent and then to eliminate or reduce uh, any human uh, manipulation mm. as uh, low as possible. Uh, so we have digitalized uh, the process. So this uh, Afua Mensa that you are talking about could be in a village somewhere and then just go into the system and, up, and, and I apply. don't need to hold then, any, any card of any political party before I can benefit. No, 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 no. These are some of the things that we are trying to eliminate. That is why we are going digital. Yes. Let, me, let me bring in Mr. Kwanza uh, at CBG. First, I, I want to get some understanding, the one ones that, for instance, a lot of the times these SMEs complain about how they struggle to even get audience with banks like yours. But first, before you even run us through that one, can you also help us appreciate the positioning or the, the investment space when it comes to small and medium size, when it comes to CBG's position or investment in the space? Have you given it that much attention as a bank? Thank you, George. Yes. In fact, C CBG has decided to prioritize this sector of the economy. So um, as part of our strategy, um, SMEs are quite key in whatever we, we do. And we have categorized SMEs to uh, micro, small, and medium. And whatever we do is targeted towards this particular sector. The way the small will behave, will be from the way the medium will behave. The way the uh, micro will behave is from the way the small behave. So we have sought to design a product and to support each particular group. Now, if you permit me, if you want me to go through the, what we've done for each of them. So if you look at the, the micro or SMEs in general, um, Access to finance is mainly limited to uh, they not having collateral. It's one of the major problems that limits them from getting finance. I, I have a, a, a big challenge there, and sorry to interrupt. I mean, yeah. somebody who is just doing so below about producing about maybe 200 bottles a day or maybe 1,000 bottles a day, how is that person going to get collateral to get um, funding from your end? Is it that maybe I should also get it right? Where should be my first source of support? Maybe family and friends before I move to the, the banking space. I mean, I, I struggle somebody who's been doing so below, feeding students on campus for maybe like two or five years. I, I struggle if that person will still have that collateral to qualify for that capital that you want to extend to that person. So George, that was in the past. For a so below seller, what we've done, you see, as I told you, we grouped our customers. What we have done now is to be able to lend to a Sobolo seller. This is what, what limits them is records, banking records, collateral. What we have sought to do is, the Sobolo seller sells every day. Most of the time, these MSMEs don't bank their sales. They don't have a bank account. What we have sought to do is to open accounts for them let them bank on a daily basis. Let's see how much they are bringing to the bank. And in fact, we don't now go, we don't allow them to bring their money to the bank. We go to the various shops to pick. By so doing, over a period of time, you're able to measure their daily sales or how the capacity they have or what they can do. And by so doing, we're able to lend to them unsecured. So that uh, notion that banks or we lend to uh, always SMEs with security, that is gone. Now we have sought to understand them better. What these MSMEs need most is cash flow lending. You just have to look at how much they are collecting. Then based upon that, you advance some money to them, which you know that they can pay. So basically what we sought to do is to, from the micro, we go to you, we collect the money to the bank over a period of time, three, six months. By, that, by just doing that, we're able to um, 
established how much this MSMEs can qualify. They can advance a loan to you collateral free. Interesting. And I'll be bringing in the audience here as well as you go on. But I was talking about the 101s. If you can walk me through mm -hmm. typically mm -hmm. what an SME needs to do mm -hmm. when they want to approach your bank for support, what do I have to do to ensure that when I present my proposal, the credit committee would approve the credit committee has to sit on my proposal <laughs> to approve that request for me. Okay. So, see, one of the major challenges with SMEs is sometimes the plans are not realistic. So, the plans should be realistic. 101, you need to have an account. You need to be banking your sales. CBG, right? Yes. You need to be banking your sales. See, most SMEs or MSMEs sell, and as soon as they sell, they pay a supplier. So there are no banking records. Two, they don't keep proper books. So he's selling, you can't really establish a profit. When you take a loan, you pay for your profits, you pay for your cash flow. So a bank will want to establish these two things to advance a loan to you. So the first thing to do is to make sure that you bank all your sales and every payment you make should come from your bank account. That's the fundamental thing that every MSME should do. Then secondly, you begin to keep proper book of records. So we should be able to establish your profits on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis, because you pay the loan out of your profits. If you, these two are not there, it becomes challenging for any bank to give money to you and not knowing the source of repayment or how much you sell. So the basic thing is not even to get a collateral, but to have a bank account, make sure that you have your sales running through the account. Two, keep proper books. And you see, we have Sometimes, picking proper books can be expensive. So they are unable to do the annual financials that we expect. But just banking your sales. Anytime you bank your sales, the bank has records of it. I can take six months of your banking records. You just establish your behavior that I can give you a loan. So the basic thing every MSA need to do is to establish a banking record. Then your financials. That other things will follow. Do I, do I get from you, the Mr. Council, that you, you are gradually moving away, even though it's still a significant portion of what you require in terms of asking for collaterals, that yeah. if I walk to your end to get some money to invest in maybe my, my pastry business and all the rest, the major thing would not be collateral. If I've had my books for the past three years, they are good, the cash flow is good, and all the rest for two or three years. How you, you grant me audience. You see, most people think that banks love collateral. Collateral is only a fallback. It's not what, if, I, if you have a collateral and your cash flow is not good, your profit is not good, the bank will not advance money to you. So we have moved from that era where we focus only on collateral. So if your cash flow is good, you, you have the character. We, can, we have moved from that of course, if the amount is significant, which wouldn't fall in the class of an SME, maybe the medium SME, that's where we look out for, for security. But for MSMEs, most of them, even they have, is not perfected. Most SMEs, the security they have is not perfected. So it is not even fit for purpose. So banks or CBG has gradually moved away from uh, demanding collateral from MSMEs before we process it. Most of them we have, we, we, in fact, this year, we have disbursed close to a billion loan to SMEs. If I tell the percentage of... A billion Ghana cities, yeah, right? Almost a billion Ghana cities to okay. S S MSMEs or SMEs. If I tell the percentage of collateral we've taken out of this, it's, it's not very significant because we are, we've gone down there to support the small, small businesses for them to grow. And you can feel from the market. We are at the market centers. We collect the money. Based on what we collect, we advance loans to you. Let, let, me, let me bring in Mr. Fram, and whilst we complain about access, there's another bit about the cost of credit as well. And the banks will tell you, if you are going for uh, T-bill plus five or plus ten, I don't know whether that's happening right now, definitely it will be difficult to step down to lend these SMEs. You talked about the MasterCard Foundation, you talked about the World Bank and all those things. What is the plan to work with these banks to? take some of these long-term capital and on lend to these small businesses, rather than you get into that business of 
lending directly to these uh, small enterprises out there? Yes, um, um, we have, uh, we, we now have a, a national MSME and entrepreneurship policy in place, um, but we have not started the implementation yet. Uh, in this document, it is stipulated that uh, we should establish, that is GA, should establish an MSME fund. And uh, work has started already on uh, the establishment of this fund. When uh, it comes into effect, when we start rolling it out, then we will consider some of uh, these other uh, interventions. But um, um, from what he was uh, saying, uh, I mean, the requirements for uh, uh, assessing funding from the banks, we have also realized that, you know, we cannot do it alone. It's a collective responsibility. So we have uh, started engaging uh, some of the banks to find out what they require from the MSMEs uh, in order to support them. And uh, we have been supported by uh, JICA under the, a project called uh, EPK uh, Output 2, EDPK out, Output put 2, sorry. And where we are preparing some of the uh, SMEs to become attractive to the banks. And then we link them later to the banks for support. A number of uh, these. Uh, SMEs that have gone through this uh, training have reported to us that uh, they have access funding from the, the banks. So I get that you are working on that, and, yes. and the economists will always say all other things being equal. We're looking at that next year, this will materialize. In fact, this is actually at the, we are actually, um, what should I say? Pilot stage? Pilots in it in uh, Accra and then Kumasi. If it works very well, then we can extend to. Uh, other regions. So we are short of getting those long-term funds that you would unlearn to some of these banks that they will lend to these SMEs as well? Uh, like I said, uh, it's only when we start uh, uh, I mean, uh, operating the MSME fund that we can mm. uh, look at that. Because I asked this question because in your own submission earlier when you talked about the World Bank being excited about a project that you've done and they brought in additional fund. And a World Bank with a triple A rating will get a very cheap capital, give it to you, but the banks will see that they also don't have cheap capital, they will lend expenses. So that is when you come in, and I'm looking at the timelines in here, that next year it's possible that they roll it out? Um, right now I can't give you the timelines. Mm -hmm. Let's wait until we start uh, implementing the MSME fund. I'll be coming to the audience for their questions and contributions very soon, but let me get to Mr. Kwanza as well. I mean, there are, there are various forms of funding, and I want you to help us. And even if CBG has anything of that sort, I mean, that should that be the only avenue when it comes to funding for these SMEs? There's talk about venture capital and all the rest. And I remember way back in school, one of our lecturers used to tell us that if your friends and your family don't believe in your business, no commercial bank will believe in your business. Help us here in terms of what strategies, the form of funding that these small sized businesses can adopt when it comes to funding and growing their enterprise. So, um, you know, banks will typically offer debt or, or loans, but these come at a price, and the cost of borrowing in Ghana, as you know, is expensive. For MSMEs, um, the first choice will be equity. No, equity is not very expensive. You can get equity from your friends your, and family to start a business. So usually, that's what we'll, we'll recommend. There's a new trend also with crowdfunding. You can also resort to crowdfunding as well um, to start a business because what the cost of crowdfunding may not be as the bank. And now, if you don't solve the the, those who support in crowdfunding can also even get equity in, 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 the, in the business. Leasing is also one of the areas that MSMEs can consider. And the leasing, now banks are into leasing, but banks can't do operational, op operational lease. It's only a leasing company that can do operational lease. So leasing is also another way of um, alternative financing uh, that MSMEs uh, can, can consider. There are, there are several of those. There are venture capitals as well. 
Now, um, there are also, there's Gessal, there's Exim Bank, where you have an idea, you approach the bank. Um, Gessal, I know, is, we are doing a lot of them with the farming. So uh, when they do into a great camp, and we find the, the idea good, we can let Gessal guarantee for you. You may be a startup, but if the idea is, we, we think that you can do very well, we can uh, speak to that as well. So for, for startups or for small businesses, aside the debt, I would usually recommend equity, leasing, and uh, the crowdfunding that I've spoken about. There are a couple of things that you can also uh, look at. But basically, the bank, if you approach the bank, that will be debt, and you will have to pay interest. Yeah. Help me out. I don't know what the, the examples on the ground suggest, but there are some who would also argue that the kind of funding that we have in Ghana and maybe CBG as well yeah. is designed for maybe those high street offices and all the rest. I mean, have you supported those Swami magazine businesses, the Kainshis and all the rest that have had very good cash flows, good books, even if like five years? Is the funding and this environment conducive for those kind of startups? Hey, it is. You see, once um, we've partnered GE yeah. on a number of initiatives uh, since last year, the COVID fund and the MasterCard Foundation, these funds are relatively cheaper. So those are the ones that CBG partners or the banks partner to make the loans available cheaper. You typically get them, whilst the market rate is now 38, 35, you really get them at 15 or even some at, at 10. So these are, we partner these organizations to, we are currently even partnering uh, DBG, Development of Bank, Development Bank of Ghana, to make um, loans accessible to this SMEs. They are giving us cheap uh, funds to all lend. So if we want to lend to, these uh, businesses at our rates be expensive for them. However, some of them have very good cash flows and we have lent to them. We, we always have first available to lend to these customers. It is just based on their ability to pay. So those who are ability to pay at the magazines, at the kinds, they are in business of us. Those who cannot pay are the ones that uh, we use the donor, donor funds, donor agencies to help or to support. So those who have very good confidence and have good margins, we are supporting, and we are not taking any collateral from them. Last question before I come to the crowd. How difficult or where do we draw the line between the, the social responsibility bit, mm -hmm. as in growing SMEs, and the fact that, listen, these are other people's funds, so I'm sorry, even if your cash flows are good and all the rest, there was one box that you, I failed to take for you, and it's difficult to learn to you. Where does the bank, in terms of philosophy-wise and all the rest, draw the line between the, the social responsibility where the Mark Zuckerbergs and all the didn't start today, they started from somewhere, that we help these SMEs grow and for them to be good because Bank A doesn't want to support Ajua Mansa. Mm -hmm. Ajua Mansa has to go to another bank when she's established. Now that bank that refused their lending is not running after her for support to lend to her. See, what we invest in or we, we are seeking to do now is to invest in capacity building. We've organized various SME clinics across the country to train artisans, to train these SMEs, for them to understand what they need to do to access funds. And this is at our cost. We don't charge them anything. So once we train them, we nurture them, and they mature, imagine we have wave collateral. So these are some of the things that you are doing socially by spending our resources to train them to build capacity so that they can access. In fact, from next year, we are even looking at investing in accounting systems for our SMEs so that they can keep proper books for them to be able to access funds easily. So these are the areas that we have invested. We, are, we invest in capacity building so that the clients will be, will be set, will be ready to access finance. You know, money is not free. It costs us to acquire money to lend to you. So in terms of um, lending at uh, a discount, what we do rather is to seek for cheap funding from GEA, from government, so we can all lend to SMEs who cannot 
pay the high interest. But what we do is to build capacity among the SME through various clinics, trainings, and other staff across the country. Mr. Kwanza, the CBG, and Mr. Fram with the Ghana Enterprise Agency. We're supposed to have one of our panelists, Sophia Ntenza, connected with us via, uh, virtually. I know whether she's on or then. Is she on for her presentation? Then I'll let her come in. Then I come to the audience here. If she is not, I think I'll come to the audience for the questions and contributions, and then we come to her. So, Sophia, if you're ready, I think you can join us with your open remarks in terms of the best practice elsewhere and how we can get around this challenge of getting access to uh, funding so far. All right. Um, good, morning. good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, greetings from Kampala in Uganda. And thank you for inviting me to this very important forum. And uh, I've worked with uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises for close to 15 years now. And for me, it's, um, it's um, it, one, yeah, it's a very interesting space because it requires a lot of um, innovation just for the businesses to stay awake, stay alive. But most importantly, financing of these businesses remains a puzzle across the continent as, as we, we have seen here and there. So uh, I currently work with uh, Africelerate. Africelerate is an entity within the Awkward Green Africa Group. And our mandate across the continent is purely to solve the challenges that SMEs face today. And we have, a, we have an ecosystem where we, we have a, a financing partner, uh, that's the Bloomberg franchise, we have a trade advisory partner because we know that if we cannot promote trade, then it's difficult to facilitate growth of these businesses. Then within the ecosystem, we also have a technology arm because we also know that digitization is critical for MSMEs to scale and to continue to grow. In addition to that, we also have a, we have a, a knowledge academy, which is Awkward Knowledge Academy. We also know that skills are at the heart of uh, the growth and scaling of SMEs. So what we, we are trying to do differently from everybody else as an accelerator is not just to focus on one aspect of uh, MSME growth, but to go back to the challenges that MSMEs face. And in our understanding, the challenges are threefold. The first is certainly finance, which is why we're here today. Access to finance is difficult. Because as, the, as our colleagues from the banks have just been saying, high risk, it's very high risk uh, to lend to some of them. Some of these businesses, that's why they ask for collateral. And many times when somebody is starting out, uh, their business is young or early stage, collateral, their collateral requirements, they may not be able to meet them. The second challenge that we aim to address is trade, access to markets. We also know that sometimes MSMEs go to the bank, to get the financing, they stock, they have working capital, but then they get stuck because their goods are not moving as fast as they should, or there's a very limited market within their geography. So that's why we, we believe that uh, focusing on trade uh, expansion or opportunities is critical. And, and, and this is the really good time for us all because of the Africa and the need to have intra-Africa trade. The third issue we're trying to address is capacity building. We know that across the continent, majority of uh, micro, small and medium enterprises are not born out of I once worked with the Global Entrepreneurship Network, and one of the things we're trying to understand were the drivers of, um, the drivers of entrepreneurship across Sub-Saharan Africa. And one of the things that stood out is the fact that majority of the entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs out of necessity. Once upon a time, you try to find a job, and uh, maybe it doesn't work out so well. So you, you, you have to go back to evaluating your skills. What can I do? And many businesses have been born out of that. On, that's a positive thing. And, and we really commend the entrepreneurs for that. On the flip side, however, we find that these entrepreneurs have not been prepared in terms of skills and experience for them to build sustainable businesses, the kind of businesses that uh, a funder will trust 
to lend to because they can see, they can project their growth and they have put the right strategies and, and systems in place. So because of that, that's why we go back to say to the third issue that we are trying to address, which is the capacity of the MSMEs. And when we say capacity, it's not just the skills. It's the skills on one hand, and on the other hand, it's also uh, the, the, the tools that they need to actually deliver. These tools are software, which could be digital, like maybe financial management applications, which is what one of our colleagues from the bank was just talking about, if you're able to show your cash flows and things like that. But then we also realized that our production capacity across Sub-Saharan Africa is limited by the fact that we don't have the tools for production. There's an example that um, one of uh, the, the partners at the farm keeps referring to for the gari processing, where if somebody had the tools, they would have the ability to produce a lot more and they're not able to do that. So this accelerator is actually founded on those three things. How do we get finance to the businesses that are ready to use the finance appropriately to scale and grow? How do we open up markets for them? And lastly, how do we build their capacity? And also, in terms of opening markets, uh, what we have done for the last uh, couple of years are trade road shows. And we have a, a, a franchise called the Africa Trade Road Shows. So we've done this in Sierra Leone, in the Gambia, and in Ghana most recently. The, the reason we do these trade road shows is to bring SMEs or MSMEs on board, and then also to be able to create a network within the continent of agencies that facilitate trade because it's important for people to push their commodities or services as a way to grow their cash flow and show viability for financing. So um, with that background, I will just um, pause for a minute and yes, let you all just, um, yeah, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Ntenta. And I'll, I'll be coming back to you later to also share with us the experience from Kampala in terms of how they've been able to do with access to funding for uh, small size and medium enterprises. So at this time, I want to come to the audience if anyone has a question for any of our panelists here, the bank, the Ghana Enterprise Agency, and all the rest, or contribution as well. I'd be so grateful. If you raise your hands up, I'll see how they can get the microphones over to you. So it's time for us to ask the question. So any quick contribution, I'll be so grateful. Any question for our panelists here, you can uh, raise your hands up. Can we get a microphone to the gentleman over there? If you have an extra microphone, that do that. Have to. There's a microphone, all right, sorry. So I think I'll try and do that. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's a, over here. Oh, okay, sorry. Good morning. My name is Alma. And this is my product. I do lunch bags in Ghana here. Um, we've heard all that our panelists said. But I think uh, some of us have gone through all that you have said. But we still have challenges and um, difficulties. For me, I have an idea. I don't know whether this idea is applicable to everybody, but I think um, what some of the banks should do to some of us is that they should adapt our businesses. Uh, I don't know, but sometimes we are given the, the funding. Before you realize, the money is just gone. Because your competitors are the manufacturers of the raw materials you use. And they also produce um, the very thing you are doing at very cheaper uh, cost. So at the end of the day, you realize you are working, but you cannot match up to your competitors. Mm. Then your money is just gone like that. So I think if the banks will have the, um, the they would like to adapt some of our businesses and grow it. You touched on that. You said they should grow our businesses, but I think they should be able to adapt a very potential business, like my business, for instance. Uh, when it is adapted, they can grow it for it to get to a point that they can also benefit from it. And one, it will also become a collateral for whatever uh, they will want to uh, take as a collateral for my business. Mm. So I, I think they should be able the, to- The adapt. name again in the business, please, sir. I want to get uh, that. The name is Alma, 
Ama. My name is Mrs. Techi Mercy. Mrs. Techi Mercy. But that's my brand name. It is Ama. My okay. name is Ama. Ama. Thank and you so much. And it's a lunch bag. We do other bags like screw bags and other bags. So Great initiative. But I'll come to, but there's a bit about venture capital. I stand to be educated where this nice business idea can be sold to some of these firms to own equity in these businesses, expand and later get out. But let me allow the, the person who appreciates the finance to do the talking, please. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Techivez. Thank you. Um, so um, I really appreciate your, your point, your question. But the equity finance, equity businesses or venture capitals are well placed to do what uh, you are asking for. For now, the banks are not really uh, acquiring uh, businesses. You know, we, we come in for debt, debt support. The venture capital actually come buy part of your business so that you can grow. So they don't, you're not under pressure to repay, but they own part of your businesses. Crowdfunding as well can do that. We haven't explored the possibility. We can do that, but... Uh, so, sorry. So, venture capitals are well pleased to do what uh, you are asking for. Currently, the banks, or we haven't uh, introduced a product yet that will allow us to acquire um, uh, shares in, uh, in businesses. What we, we do is to provide support for you. Um, and what I, we'll consider that, but what we, we are looking at for women like you, we are looking at introducing a product from next year where the cost of borrowing will be very minimal for, just to support women. That's one thing that we are also looking at to support women who are into small scale businesses like, like you. But to acquire shares in your business, that we haven't gotten there yet, we'll consider it. But I can assure you that from next year, we have a product for, for women, uh, business made by women, where the cost of borrowing will be better than... Uh, I, I think Mr. Mr. Kwan said she needs the, 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 the money. I, I, I'll come back to you just a quick one. She needs the money now, but let me bring in the, the Ghana Enterprise Agency about what you're doing for women like this into this and all the rest. But they also, if you listen to her, there's a, there's a bit about the training and all the rest and the support because she says that she takes the money mm -hmm. and the money doesn't take her there or doesn't take her home. GEA, yes. I mean, the, the social good comes here. If yes, the product uh, is good, the business is good, what are you doing for I enterprises think, like this? I think she will need some training, but that will be based on uh, the needs that we assess, I mean, about her business. So I will advise that uh, she visits our office. I don't know where she is located. But we have uh, offices or district offices in 210 districts currently. We also have 37 business resource centers scattered uh, throughout the country. So she can visit any of our district offices and I think they will assist her. But if she's still interested in the uh, venture capital, she can talk to Venture Capital Trust Fund. Uh, they will assist her, I'm sure. Mm. Mr. Kwanza, um, the, the, the bit about getting the capital, but it appears like just saying take home pay, but the, the money doesn't take you home. You know, what are you also helping or going to do for businesses like this that they come for the capital? Either the facility is so expensive, the insurance and everything that I get just a cut off that and yeah. I can't do anything with that. Okay, okay. so sometimes it's, as I said, sometimes the amount requested sometimes is lower than what is technically would need. In the light of this, we, we have simply has just established an SME center where we are offering trainings to SMEs and also in situations like this, we will sit with you and try to understand your business and, to, and we will give more attention to small businesses there. Because whereas some of them come for the facility, the amount that they actually need, they understate it or overstate it. So we need to uh, give more training, build more capacity. That's why I mentioned earlier that we are spending time with the SMEs on SME clinics, uh, training the artisans and uh, micro small business to, for them to understand or to appreciate what goes on into uh, assessing a loan so that they don't understate or overstate their, their requests. 
And of course, I hope you're okay, right? So we can do the... You know, there are a lot of people who have very good businesses, but they are not even noticed. They are not noticed at all. They invite us to all these meetings and things, but for them to pick on one product and say, this is a good product, let's support it, they don't do it. Meetings upon meetings it doesn't really help. I think we are doing a very serious business here. They don't pick on us. They don't even notice our businesses. We struggle and struggle and struggle. If you dare go for a loan and you are not able to pay, you are taking off a platform, which is very bad. I don't know, but for me today, I think I'm on my products. Okay, Thanks. I think that we'll take, we'll take Mrs. Uh, Kwanza out of this meeting and then see how we can have the, the more one-on-one -on -one with the uh, distinguished gentleman here. I think that because of time, because I'll see whether we can take about two or three questions together as a block, and then I come to my guest to respond to it. So your name and where you're coming from, then your question or contribution, please. My name is uh, Gifty, Mrs. Gifty Oklu. Uh, I'm a cocoa processor for the past 16 years, and I export it. And I'm just coming from Abuja. Monday, this Monday, I just came from Lagos Trade Fair. In fact, the international market, when you meet them, like Nigeria, they like cocoa. You know, cocoa is uh, Ghana's cash crop. You cannot meet them in terms of machinery. Uh -huh. So I supported what my sister said, meeting upon meeting, but my company is tag 1D1F, and I know the gentleman there, I have been supported. I, in fact, I use their platform a lot, and get by platform a lot. We need machinery. What we need, I mean, I need machinery. And the venture capital, I don't know where they are. You walk, walk, when you go to this place, they go to this place, this SME, I, I don't think it's working. You understand? Um, when we just came back from Lagos, when you meet, meet their companies, they say they are supported by Bank for Industries. They have it. Ghana, we don't have it. So you cannot meet them in terms of packaging. Nigeria is good at packaging. And when you go to international, you cannot meet them. And our banks are here. So please, thank you. Indeed, please. Uh, let, uh, uh, you can know these concerns now. Let me do this, gentlemen, then I'll come to you, sir, please. Uh, too. Um, my name is uh, Edward Lamte. Um, in the recent parts, there was a, a seminar of this nature, three days, at the Marriott Hotel. And I remember uh, this uh, Oak Green, they spoke very good. And they even gave me their complimentary cards. Because I told them that uh, I have a, a foundation, an art gallery at East Legon. And uh, some students have been coming for training, entrepreneurial skills. I teach them batik, tie-dye, paintings, and of that nature. I collected a card. And for the past three months, any time I call the lady, her name is uh, Sylvia. I can't remember the surname. Any time I call, he doesn't pick. He only spoke to me once. And I said, she give me an appointment so that whatever she said in the seminar, there will be a follow-up so that I can get some resources so that I can train more students in the field of uh, creative arts. But for now, nothing has happened. So you organize case, uh, seminars upon seminars where we can get money, but at the end of the day, we don't have access to take, to get the, the money. So I don't know, and uh, I feel it's high time, like the two speakers have said the same thing. They, you come and tell us, but when we want to assess this thing, we don't get it. So I'm using this opportunity to tell you the months that when we come this time around, you better support us. Your thank name, you. sir, please. Thank you so much. Edward Lamte. Edward Lamte, thank you so much. Let me come uh, back here, the gentleman here. Uh, for Let me see the gentleman, I'll come to you, madam, please. So the gentleman with the hand up, and then I come to the, the lady over here, please. Good morning. My name is Romeo, Romeo Ja, my company, Rovelis. So we do uh, procurement. We actually do screen forms for basic schools in the country. Now my question is, uh, the banks, do they inform those uh, at Bank of Ghana and stuff, the cost of borrowing in Ghana is almost impossible. Currently, personally, I'm borrowing at 41% to run my business. How are you supposed to 
pay 41%, pay your statutory taxes, stay in business, pay your employees. It's, it's almost impossible. So if the banks meet, do they talk about these kind of things? Like, do they know how it's difficult for ordinary business people to run their business? Recording in progress. Yeah, that's my question. And uh, what they can do to lower the cost of borrowing? Because they tell you, oh, the Bank of Ghana base rate is uh, at maybe 29% or 30% before they add this. You know, it's what goes into that and how can we lower our cost of borrowing? Thank you. Can I do the last one and I, I'll come to you, sir, please, so that we can get them, um, get the targeted response to these questions, madam. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Matilda. I am an importer. The mechanism do baby and I'm the tree now one to be an assay. Thank you. Um, I will want to ask uh, my brother from the CBG, CBG one or two questions. Uh, number one, how long does it take to grant a loan to a client? Number two, uh, my, it's a suggestion, let me put it that way. I want to suggest that um, it's based on what my sister said here. She, she, um, during her you know, petition, she, she said um, the money that she always takes from the bank doesn't take her. The take home who pay doesn't take her home. Yes, it doesn't go anywhere. All these things comes because when you are being given the money, uh, I think they give you uh, like one month, then they will start reducing the balance. They will be taking the money and the profit as well. So if it goes that way, maybe somebody will take like three months, you know, to start doing whatever he or she wants to do with the money before what will comes out start coming out. So if the person takes the money and then she starts doing whatever she's doing, waiting for the money to be ready before she'll start paying the money and the interest. Then the, the money is due already. So you start paying before even what you have used the money or what investment that you have done will start coming. You see? Uh -huh. So me, my, my suggestion or my little, you know, plead is that can't you in any way sit with your board and then suggest for us, we are who we those are taking we those who are taking money from the bank that maybe when we give you the money, depend on the amount of the money you have taken, you might start paying the interest for maybe three months, then you start paying the uh, the principal that you have been given to. So maybe for the three months, when you are paying, the, when you start paying the principal. The first three months that you have started paying the interest, you pay that money in total. Then you start you know, paying the rest, um, the capital with the interest. Or you can be you know, a father Christmas that we will start paying the interest. Then when the whole year is due, then we pay the principal. That one too won't be bad. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Let me come to Mr. Kwanza. The, the, let me start first with you. The, the bit about the cost of credit uh, which is a, a huge challenge and what can be done in this uh, current environment. There's, there's a bit about the loan conditions, the credit conditions as well. And then maybe Mr. Afram, you also come in with a bit about, you know, the, the social good, what can still be done with the soft credit and these uh, long-term funds that you cannot lend to them. And also the question about the packaging and then the question about, that would also go to the UKGCC. How do we move on from here and the real links, the decks, the support system, how they can get access to CBG that tomorrow when she walks into your bank, there's indeed a dedicated DEX for SMEs that can handle it. So let's first start with the, the cost of credit issue and the credit conditions issue first. Okay, so the cost of credit, you see, banks take money from individuals and unlend it to customers. And the cost of credit is determined by, one of the uh, determinants of cost of credit is how much 
depositors are willing to take from the bank. You see, currently, treasury bill is at 35% or 34%. If we take FD from customers, they are demanding the same amount. Now, that becomes my cost. So I will need to add my margin to it. So what my brother is saying, I agree with you perfectly. Cost of credit is high, but it is the cost of funding. The banks are, are also challenged from what we, raising the funds. You know, um, the GR is up. When government, G, Bank of Ghana, increases, everything is influenced by the policy rate. When the policy rate goes up, it means cost of credit is going up. And it starts from the policy rate. When policy rate goes up, GRR goes up. When GRR goes up, all other things go up. So banks pick their feed from this. And when, they are picking it, when you bring money to us, you're also demanding higher interest rates. So it's, 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 it's a cycle. What the banks will do is to reduce our margins. Now, if carry your borrowing at uh, 41%, another bank may give it to you at 36%, 37%. If that bank had invested in T-bill, he could have earned 35%, but the bank refused to do that, lend the money to you. The bank has an infrastructure, paying staff, but the margin is just 200 basis points. So you see, the, the cost of credit issue, I understand, but it, it is not um, the bank's position to punish customers, but it's a general economic condition. It is informed by the policy rates from Bank of Ghana, then everything else uh, flows through. What we do is to try to shrink our margins by not charging higher. Let's, let's the bit about the, the, the credit conditions, which I think is it's directly within your fold, yes. okay, where so, she raised the issue about the time taken to get a loan and then the credit conditions as well. Okay, so I think my sister also has, a, let me attend to Recording my sister. Recording in progress. Um, who does a cocoa? I think you spoke about machinery. You would need, you see, one of the issues also Assessing credit is also information, right? You know, banks cannot do leasing. If you want the machine, we don't have to give you machine, or we don't have to give money to buy it. The bank can buy the machine and lease it to you. But if you haven't approached the bank, sometimes, or you, you may come to the bank, or oh, give me a loan to do this. Give me a loan to do. You, you will not tell us what you want to do for. You tell us you need a loan for a machine. We will say, oh, don't worry. Let's buy the machine and lease it to you. After a period of time, you pay then the machine becomes your, your property. So for, for the machinery support, my bank does, and I know other banks also do that. So you can approach us, yes, right? Then I think my... No, you have to tell us about the machine you need. And in fact, you have to even choose a particular machine. The bank cannot choose the machine for you. Yes, you have to choose the machine, right? Yeah, thank you. And my sister also asked of the turnaround time, how long it takes to process a loan. And also the credit conditions as conditions. well. Conditions. Yes. You see, it depends on the kind of loan you are requesting for. Some loans, let's say temporary overdrafts, can take just a day, right? But if, let's say, you want a loan to build a factory, that will not take a day. can take up to two, three weeks or even a month because we need to do a whole lot of assessments of your business to see whether... You have a need for that factory, and when you build that factory, it will bring you enough money to pay for the loan. So that may take a longer time. But if you need money for trading, quick imports, um, overdraft to just pay somebody, get paid, those ones are quick. Within three or four days, we can give them to you. But when the money involved is huge, or what you are going to use it for, it's a building, something substantial, capital, then it might take a little time because we need to do in that analysis of your request. So there is a kind of loan that you want that determines, uh, but the normal trading loan, import loan, the, the, the temporary overdraft, within a week, it's, it's ready. Some are even within a day. I think she asked a question also about the, the conditions and the time taken. That is where that SME lending and all those things come in. That is there a special condition when it comes to lending to some of these startups, sole so proprietorship, and all those things where maybe in terms of interest and all the rest, it can be varied, the tenure and all those things. Yes, yes, that's the, the repayment. Sometimes, yes, I, I, I get it. Okay. The, you were saying about importing and 
Yeah. Lending money. Yeah. Takes a week. But why I ask this question mm -hmm. is that mine took more than a month. And even my RO was chasing, chasing. He has to go on leave because of me. He was not going because I was putting pressure on his head. And like it took more than a month. Me, I was even tired, you see. And when it came, and he didn't even say sorry for the inconveniences. He just gave me the money. Why? <laughs> Please, it, it should come earlier. Because as soon as you accept that you give us the money, we also make our plans towards it. Maybe I've, you know, I've called for some goods, I've done this, I've done that, I've done that. Waiting. Then people are, why am I finding money? You see, those kind yeah. of things. And it creates a lot, it creates a lot of inconveniences for us. So please, when, if you delay, say sorry when you are giving the money to me. Okay. Thank you. And to address the issue, you know, she spoke about immediately we give her a loan. The following month, we take our repayment. You see, it is not, we have flexible repayments. We, we, don't, we don't have the chance to take a loan, immediately we, we disperse you the following month. Sometimes you may, you have to tell us what you are going to use the money for. If you tell us, and you, you see, you are traders, you are trading, you are getting money every day. So it's presumed that the money you cash flow comes this month, every day the cash flow is coming. So You'll be using that to pay. But sometimes you have peculiar challenges that you have to let us know that I'm taking this loan, but please allow me just to pay interest. Then in three months' time, I will start paying the capital. We do that all the time for customers. But let us know. Let us know that this is how you want it. And we'll do it. We'll do it for businesses all over. Assuming the school borrows from us. The school doesn't make money every month. It's usually termly. So you usually take the loan or you pay for a loan every term. Not every month. So it's, it's, you have to let us know that by nature of your business, you, you prefer not to pay every month, but you want to pay quarterly or you want to pay let's say, every two months. If you tell us, we'll do it for you. But if you don't tell us, pay your cash flow. What we see on the cash flow is what we use to assess and build a repayment plan. But if you have a peculiar charge that you haven't told us, we wouldn't know. And so we'll let you pay a month after we disperse the money to you. Mr. Um, uh, Fram, there, from what they've said, there's a, a thing about the, the social lending, if I can use that this thing, and yes. what is the Ghana Enterprise Agency doing as we speak yes. now? I, I think um, I, I've said this in my presentation earlier. We are not uh, focused on you know, uh, uh, providing finances to businesses. It's the work of the bank. Uh, it's only when they don't get the assistance from the bank that they come to us. And uh, like I also said earlier, the financing gap in the MSME sector is very huge. So, um, for example, with our COVID uh, fund from the government, we're giving 600 million, and uh, about 918,000 people registered. And the value of their request, the total value was about 9.3 billion Ghana cities. But the money was only 600,000 cities, 600 million Ghana cities. So we could only support a few of them. We supported only about 300, a little over 300,000 people. So we cannot support everybody, but uh, we'll continue to come up with the interventions to support as many uh, MSMEs that we can. We can, we can. Uh, some of the funds, for example, the COVID fund. We are the, the repayment phase now. We are collecting the, the repayments. Uh, if we collect enough, we will you know, turn it into a revolving fund. It's the same with the Encosuo fund. That's the MasterCard uh, COVID fund. So let's see how it goes. But we cannot support everybody. But we'll continue you know, providing the quality BDS and then linking them to the banks. There's a bit about training and support as well, yes. but also just want to be practical here. After this engagement, how can some of these people enrich you, come not you personally, even the office, dedicated decks that they can get access to to deal with some of their issues? Yes, uh, that's why I mentioned that we are in 210 districts, I mean district offices. Uh, they are called business advisory centers. And then we also have 37 business resource centers. Um, 
the head office is also here. Most of Where is it located? Yeah. It's just behind us here, behind the children's uh, park. We are in between FAO and uh, Kempinski Hotel. So okay. from here, you can just walk to the office. And uh, the lady here knows us very, very well. We have been with her when she was a micro, and now she's grown to a certain level. And uh, she's benefited from us too, financially, and then from our BDS programs. Then she also stated that she didn't know where to find, uh, uh, what do you call it, the Venture, venture Capital, capital yeah. Trust. So from here, after this place, you can see me, and I'll direct you to the place. Yes. CB, CBG, we know you're all over, but do you have dedicated SME centers and decks that people can walk into to get some of these support as well? Yes, uh, across all our 113 branches, we have an SME desk in all our branches. Mm. So we are spread over the whole of Ghana, 113 branches. Every branch, every single branch has an SME desk. Your office at Kokomlemle, is it the dedicated yeah. SME center? Yes, that's except for advisory. Okay. So you, you come there for advice, but every branch that you go, you can access our product. So that's the Kokomlemle is just for advisory services for SMEs. So if you need advice, you want us to help you on something, you can come there. Walk in there. Walk in there. And we also do trainings for, uh, special training for SMEs. So 10, 5 in, in groups. We train SMEs, we build capacity. That's what we, 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 we do there. But across all our 30, 113 branches, you can visit any of them. Any of, all of them have a dedicated relationship manager in charge of SME. And they won't delay on the loans, just like what our lady is saying here. Yeah. I'm happy finally she, she got the loan. Okay. Uh, but, but she was yeah. talking about compensation, you know, as well. <laughs> Let me... Okay. Okay. So far, if you were following us, there's a question about uh, one gentleman here not getting the response from your end when the request was made for some support, right? So, okay, so far, if you can hear us, uh, if you can respond to the concern here, please. Great, great. So thank you for the feedback, um, and, and we truly apologize for the mishap and the, the communication gap. So I have taken the feedback, and I'll table it with Sylvia, as you mentioned. But maybe just to clarify, um, the program, yes, we came and we had the trade road show. As I mentioned earlier on, we have five, uh, five divisions within the group. So the accelerator program in Ghana is yet to start. We have actually not yet started. So that's probably where the gap is. So because the accelerator has not yet started, we, the investment readiness program sits within the accelerator. So it's difficult for us to skip that stage and go straight to lending. But you, we have taken your feedback, and we will certainly manage the communication flow much better. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, let's come here, and then I'll move there as well. The, the microphones, please. There's one gentleman here, your name, and where you're coming from, and your question or contribution, then I move to the Yeah, please, the, the one in the brown top. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Eric Efa. Uh, I'm in the pharma industry. It looks like we've all forgotten about what we play in our various environments when it comes to the pharmacies and all that. My pharmacy is in Osu. Now, due to the exchange rate, those importers or the manufacturers in the pharma industry are not giving credit to anybody. So if the importer or the manufacturer is not giving uh, credit to the wholesalers, for which we also buy from the wholesalers and sell in our various communities. So if tomorrow, and I believe all of you here, when you are not well, you enter our shops, then you buy. So if by tomorrow, let's say we close, or we've closed our shops, and you don't get the, the, uh, the medicine that you require from a doctor or prescribed by a doctor to you, how are you going to survive? So I think there is a need for you to look at we the pharmacies in our various communities. As now, they are not giving any credit facility to us in the chain, in the pharma chain. What are you doing to us? It goes to the banks and the Ghana Enterprise, uh, Ghana Enterprise, Enterprise Agency, yes. because we are all involved in this. Mm. It's a collective responsibility. So I want to hear from both of them what they are doing to help we, 
that we are in the pharmacies or we are in the pharma industry in our various communities. Thank you. I'll go to the next. Not taking anything away from them. I mean, anybody who is in the import business now, it's not anything to be excited about. I think there was an issue about supply of dollars as well, which was a major factor. Now we are hearing from the Bank of Ghana that they're going to give priority to petroleum products and medical supplies and from secure products. So maybe that could help deal with that thing a little bit, but I'll still come to them for them to give you the practical solution to your issue. I saw a hand over there, please. Yeah, my name is Samo Saki. Um, I'm into welding and fabrication. My question is for Mr. CBG. Yes. Mr. Kwanza. Mr. Kwanza, yes. Uh, we, we have an account with CBG, and I have a big problem with CBG. Um, you know, we work for various companies, and we, I think we opened an account there. We started work. Fortunately, we were able to gather some funds, and then check came. It came, we put it into the CBG account. So we have a situation whereby the company we are working for, we're able to get, uh, get our check, start the job, get our check, finish the job, because then it shows that the risk of a situation whereby you give a client money and he's not able to perform is there, but we did it. And then another project came, another contract came from the same company. And all these monies are going into CBG account. So we approached them that we don't even want a loan. We've got an appeal from the company that, okay, this is the next uh, you know, uh, contract. And we've done, we are done with the first one. The first one, all the, fi the funds came into the CBG account. And so we need, I mean, the appeal is coming. We need to start, let's say, in a week's time. And I'll take his word. He's, he said right now that when it's a temporary, uh, what do you call it, OD, you can get it within a day. And that's what we wanted. And they said, oh, yes, they are going to the head office. They are going to talk to uh, people at the head office and what have you up to today. So, I mean, fortunately for us, the company needed the thing so badly that as soon as they gave us a PO, the next day we got uh, a check from the company and we did it. We, we bought our materials because materials cost, when, you, when it comes to water and fabrication, we're building tanks, very big tanks. It's very, very expensive. So we, we got the check. And then this is, uh, we, we, we were talking about another company that we work for. They paid us millions of Ghana cities. But before they give you, they also give you PO. And all these companies I'm talking about, we've deposited money into CBG Recording accounts. Recording in progress. And when we go, we need, I mean, we show you evidence. This is the PO. Can we get money to start? And evidence of us being able to, you know, fulfill the job, delivering to the client, the client being happy. Everything is there. Mm. But we just can't seem to get anything from them. Yeah. So that is my, that's my main problem. No, to the point that we, are, we, are, we, we rather get loan from a microfinance uh, person, a uh, company. We've never deposited money there. We get it, even though it's expensive. We get it, we pay on time. We've got in a total of 500,000 Ghana cities so far. And that company, God bless that company. They are the reason why we are still in business, not CBG. Any other question again? No. I come to Mr. Kwanza. This is very critical for you to address as well, and then the other gentleman from the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. Okay. So, for the pharmaceutical industry, we I, I don't, have you applied to CB, have you applied for any facility at CBG? No, because we have not turned down any anyone who applied for facility at CBG in the pharmaceutical industry. In fact, we pro, we have processed about two or three within the last one month. We haven't turned down any. So um, if we can talk after the meeting, because we haven't turned down any, we are supporting them. We, we are still supporting importers exporters. We are still supporting them. The only issue is, what my brother raised, the cost of credit is high. But we haven't withdrawn our support. So if you have any, 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 any request, you can still bring it. Now to the... And to my brother, um, I have to get... I, 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 off head, I can't... Uh, several facilities come to the bank. So I may have to take it as a certain case and discuss with him after the, uh, the, the program. I, I promise I will address that, that issue. If I want to address it now, we may, it may take time. But 
Uh, let me also, uh, for, I mentioned that TOD can be taken for a day. You see, TODs are not meant for funding projects. TODs are meant for bridging the gap. So you're expecting a check from um, a customer tomorrow, but you need money today, then I give you to, to use, then the check comes tomorrow. So I just wanted to correct that, that impression. TODs are very short term. You, we give it to you when you're expecting some money to come. As soon as the money comes, it clears off. But what you're referring to actually is an LPU financing. LP finance. So I may have to speak to you after the program to understand what really went wrong, what happened. Then I can I can address it for you. Right. Okay. Okay. Can we do the last round of questions and come to a? There's any question? Okay. Again. All right. Sorry. Yes. Again to the banks. So uh, I noticed one trend. Okay. You approach a bank for a facility. You know what you need to get your business going. Or maybe you have goods that you need X amount exactly to bring in. And then they take your details, particulars, everything, do their credit analysis. Most often than not, give you half the money you need, which will not, like you said, take you home. It will not do the work. But once you accept it, you still owe the bank you have to pay. And now you're looking for extra credit to get the job done. Most often than not, people end up defaulting because of this. Because when I take money from you, and I'm not able to complete the job because the money is not enough, and I'm not able to get extra credit in time, at the end of the day, I end up defaulting. So what goes into this credit uh, I would say analysis because in my case, for instance, I know I check most boxes. I'm in business for a long time. I know what I'm doing. You meet credit committee, you tell them exactly what they are doing. They sometimes seem not to understand. And then they give you a facility that you can use. Like you're processing a loan. It takes about a month or two. In that time space, the city is doing what it's, it's doing. I start at 10, we end up at 14, 15, and then I'm asking for 3 million, give me 1.5. The nominal value is gone. Do, do, do you understand? So when I take that money at the interest rates we're talking about, it's like I'm in trouble. So what goes into this? Like, how do you support businesses in real time? You know, knowing that this is the CD amount I requested. The nominal value is going down within the time that you are processing the facility. How do you bridge those gaps? How do you help me to get exactly what I need to be able to pay my facility? These are the kind of things I'm talking as in when the banks meet as a collective body, do you discuss these things, you know, to be able to support the business community? There's a, a credit condition uh, challenge there. There's an exchange rate issue there. Okay. And then there's an inflationary issue there as well. So that if you want to take a look at uh, take care. So there are some questions online. I'll just read them out, if you'll permit. So one is, um, hello, dear officials, panelists, and all participants. My name is Dahani Sulemana, a young entrepreneur in the agribusiness sector in northern Ghana. My question is the following. I would like to know for us, the young beginners in business, often we are confronted with the financial means not to meet the request of our customers to deliver their products in the international market. Is it possible to have financing to execute the contract with a payment method by letters of credit? How can I get financing to start a profitable business without any bank guarantee? I would be very pleased to receive more information. I'll read the second one quickly. I am Kwejo from Hosaps Limited, a three-year-old business. However, due to limited working capital, I'm unable to scale up. Can I know if you can assist with soft loans? Question three. Good morning. Please, may I know when the GA is rolling out the new grant for the high-growth SMEs? Thank you. So I don't know whether you boxed in. There's a question about getting access to credit without guarantee as well, uh, support for uh, SMEs, Mr. Aframa. So, so 
I don't know whether you start first with the immediate one that came in from in here about the, the credit conditions, the exchange rate effect, inflation, and all those. Whether you, t you, you consider all these things, and it's true, uh, somebody's taking um, an FX facility, or maybe LC or something, it starts, the exchange rate was at, uh, when it was 11 Ghana cities, within a week, it gyrated to 14 Ghana cities. Yeah. How do you consider all those things? So first of all, uh, let me make this point. You know, until recently, we had some stability. Until recently, that wasn't an issue. That issue just came up from March thereabouts. That we started, we started to be depreciating uh, in, a, in a very uh, fast manner. So what you are saying is true. Sometimes we start closing a loan, and by the time we finish, what you requested, uh, the nominal value may have gone down. But see, we understand these things. What you need to, you need to also let us know. We can make a revision. But one of the things we consider also when assessing load is to um, look at the capacity to pay, your capacity to pay. You see, when you come to the bank and you say you want 10 million, and the bank should give you 10 million, we, we will just not give you the 10 million. We will assess you to see whether you can pay the 10 million. Maybe te the 10 million is for, for 10 months. You're going to pay 1 million CDs every month. The question is, can you pay 1 million CDs plus interest every month? That's what we will do. So that's where most of the time you see you requesting, let's say, 10 million, and we say, OK, you can qualify for 8 million based on what you are, what you are doing. So there's always that um, evaluation of your business, your plans, your sales, we look at your historical data and what you want to do to arrive at an amount that we think you can pay. Sometimes when you do that, the customer will come and say, no, I think this is not enough and I can pay this. But you need to justify to us that you can really pay. As I always keep saying, the money we are giving to you is not the bank's money. It's your friend's money, it's someone's money that we are giving to you. If we give it to you and it goes bad and the other person comes, I want my money, we can't say we gave it to this person and it went bad. So we are obliged to review all loans to make sure that that loan going, it will be paid. Collateral, I told you, is the last, is the last resort. What we focus on to ensure that you have enough cash flow or what you're going to invest the money into, you will get the money back and pay us. So it's not a little bit, or we don't take joy in just um, reducing the amount that you request for. No, it's based on analysis to arrive at a particular amount to, to give you. If you have an issue with it, you can come and we talk. You justify or make your point, then we can, we can revise it. We've done, we've done it in the past. But what happens is sometimes the customer will not tell us. They'll just accept what we're giving to them. That's not enough. And go and use it. When they are stuck, then they come. But let us know. We can always talk. Banks are seen as that's not flexible. But we are flexible, actually. We talk always. In fact, people will come to us, tell us that their money wasn't enough. They are a default. But we still sometimes give them more money to go and trade so they can pay what we give to them. We do that always. So we are quite flexible. But if you don't tell us your problem, then we wouldn't know. They will also come at you that pay us, pay us. But if, you, if we sit there and talk, we are always flexible. The, the, bit, the question from online, the guarantee aspect, and how to support. Uh, okay. So uh, let me start with Suleimana. Yeah, I think Suleiman, so. Yeah. Uh, the export. Yeah. So you see, we know the challenges there exporters are, are facing. So we have introduced a product, export pre-shipment, that we are able to support customers who have been able to export at least three times consistently to abroad. You see, we also need people who have experience in exports. If you don't have experience in exports, you might export and you know we get paid. So we focus on those who have done exports consistently for at least three times to a particular supplier then we can support you. We're able to do this up to 100,000 US dollars. I use US dollars because when you export, the influence are usually in dollars. That's why we cap it at 100,000 US dollars, not in cities. So if you're you are a very good exporter and you need financing, we can support you. And this is based on track record. And if the one you are exporting to has an LC as well, we can do that for you. So some, some uh, export to abroad and it's backed by an LC. We can take that and finance it for you. But you need to have prior experience, else you export 
and payments will not come, or you may you may even export a substandard product because the product has not been uh, tested where where it's going. So we have a product for exporters, and we've given supported a number of exporters uh, currently. Mr. Fram. Yes, um, let me answer the lady from Tamale. Uh, in fact, uh, I will advise that uh, she takes uh, advantage of the Ghana Jobs and Skills program that uh, Recording in progress. we uh, launched just about three days ago. Uh, this project is targeting the youth. In fact, it's under the, uh, the government's Youth Start program. It's targeting the youth between 18 and 40 years. Uh, is to provide them with entrepreneurial skills and then some uh, grant to start their, their businesses. In fact, it's targeting those who are in the tertiary, uh, I mean, graduate from the tertiary institutions who have business ideas uh, but do not have any support to bring them into uh, fruition. And then it's also targeting those who are school dropouts but have started something, have gone through apprenticeship and have started something. Yes, but they will have to go through some entrepreneurial training, skill training uh, at different levels, three levels, and then they apply for the grants and then they, 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 they are uh, assisted with the grants and they can start their businesses. Even those who don't get a grant can also start their businesses after the uh, entrepreneurial training. So she can apply. I think the application is ongoing. The portal is open. It will be there for about six weeks and after which it will be closed. So she should apply. Okay. So let me take the opportunity to take the closing remarks and uh, I'll go online to get uh, Madam Intenza and quick two minutes, two minutes, if I can have you uh, give your closing remarks and also come in, into the auditorium here. So, Madam Intenza, um, I'll, I'll give you three or five minutes here if you can wrap up for us and then we come in here. Madam Intenza, if you're still online, I uh, would ask you for your closing remarks. Do we still have uh, online, please? So for your closing remarks, please. Let me do the guest in here, then maybe I'll come. So let me start first, Mr. Mr. F. Questions, okay, so we have some questions online, right? Yes, so one last question. Still on L LPO financing, is the bank willing to grant LPO financing or invoice discounts without collateral? Yes, we are willing to do that up to a certain amount. Uh, not LP of 10, 20. There's a limit to which we can give to up to without collateral. And also, one of the things we also consider is the anchor, the person that you're going to work for. That customer or that company should be, should be credible. We don't want to give uh, an IPO financing to a company you're working for who will pay you the next 10 years or who will not pay you. So the two things here is the amount involved and who you're working for. The company should be credible and you should have a track record of the company paying on time in the past. So the two things that we, we, look, we look at for, yeah. Do we have Madam Natenza online? Oh. Okay. But also not forget that when we close this program, there is a period for a one-on-one -on -one engagement and networking as well. So if there isn't an opportunity for you to do the general question, you can still do that. But, but please go ahead, Madam, please. Okay, thank you. I think for this one, I'll speak on behalf of Mr. Kwanza. Mr. Kwanza. My brother was saying something, um, he was saying something about when you take a loan and you are not being able to finish with what you're supposed to do with it, then you are stuck in the middle and you cannot pay. Uh, I think um, we, the clients, sometimes must be open to the, R the ROs and the people at the top that we are dealing with. 
just be open, just flow. They will be of help. CBG, they're aware they. It's rather unfortunate my brother is not enjoying it. Bro, Charlie, get in touch. They will help you aware they. Uh -huh. So um, they have a, a package like top up. I don't know how they call it there, but me, what I know is a top up. If you are paying on time, and then um, maybe in the middle of what, you know, where you are, you think you need more to, you know, explore or to go further. When you discuss with them, they, they will top it up for you. How much you want, you just tell them, and then they'll work things together, and then, you know, take the old one and give you another one that you are looking for, and that is the top up. Maybe you don't know. Just go further, go so deep. Thank you. I take it as a, a contribution and a compliment, right? So I can go ahead and wrap up this program. So if we, we have Madame Intenza online, or we have to go ahead, she's not online. Okay, so let me, let me get in here for your, your final uh, words as we uh, bring the curtain down on this program. Mr. Fran, please. Yes, um, I'm happy we are here to explain uh, what we do at uh, various uh, institutions. And um, like I said, we are not a bank. We only come in to support when uh, the MSMEs are not getting the support from the banks. And um, uh, whenever we roll out uh, an intervention, we are targeting MSMEs throughout the country. So you can imagine the numbers that will subscribe. So if you don't get it, in fact, in fact it's always competitive. So if you don't get the support, don't say we don't want to give you the support, it's just because of uh, the numbers. And then I also like to also suggest to uh, the bank, CBG is here, that uh, you know, when you roll out your intervention, sometimes you know, the information doesn't get to all the, your expected target groups. So if we could uh, work together, because we have uh, BACs in almost all the districts, so we can educate uh, the targets on the products that you have and then also uh, spread the information as well. Thank you. Let me go online for Madam Intenta for her. Uh, no, there's a question, right? Right, yes. Okay. So um, what are some of the methods of hedging the bank office for industries that are involved in constant foreign transfers. Please, I want to know if it's possible for my business to assess funding in order to get an office space within Kumasi and also for more publicity. We are into travels and supply. How can I get to talk to the fan team, please? And then, hi, I'm John Emisa, representing Best Siblings Company Limited. What are our opportunities available for starters? So still start up funding hedging. Is a currency hedging? And, uh, so I think uh, because of the constant fall of the CD, that's what, why the, uh, so we, we do forwards. So we have a treasury team that can engage you on forwards, can engage you on currency swaps, and, 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 and as such. But, sorry. Please explain the currency swaps and yeah. <laughs> That's, so so let me take the forward. So we agree that we will sell ten thousand dollars to you tomorrow at the at agreed rate. So tomorrow you give us the CD rate, the amount, and we give you the dollar amount. So it's but it's as a premium. It's as a premium. So whatever the rate is tomorrow, you give us that money and we give you the dollars. Uh -huh. So, and sometimes custom companies also borrow in foreign currency. You can borrow in foreign currency and you give to the bank and the bank will give you local currency in return. That's what we call the swaps. So there are several, many ways of, of, of hedging. I'm just talking about the, the common and the simple ones. So the, forward, the forwards are normally, maybe you've imported, uh, another way of imp you've imported goods and uh, you want to pay next month. But you want to know the rate in which we apply next month. So you come to us, we agree on the rate, and you pay a premium. Come next month, whatever the rate is, you pay us and we transfer the money for you. But it comes at a premium. They are all available for you, but 
you can talk to us. Then we, we can we can we, we do that uh, in a normal course of business. Yeah. So you can speak to us, or you can contact any of our branches. Then you can speak to head office, treasury, or myself. So if just to add something to it, the whole insurance insurance product or kind of insurance for this whole FX issue, right? Yes, yes, yes. But it's as a premium, I must say, because we are taking a risk. The, either the bank uh, loses or you, you lose. So there's a premium for it that will immune all of us. So but, but is this something you want to advise SMEs to go into this currency hedging? Um, what, see, there are various ways of managing foreign exchange risk. There are various ways. Currently, in our situation, what our advice is, um, if you owe in foreign currency, quickly pay. Pay, don't, don't delay. So if you delay, and previously, let's say deferred else's were good. You take a deferred, you do a deferred else six months before you pay. But now, it could cost you. If you do a deferred else, and you have to pay in six months, that might be double in six months. Some have done, some did an LC in, in March. By the time it matured in June or July, that they had default. So for SMEs, don't go into contracts where you have to pay US dollars in future. Or if you have to pay in the future, pay it now. And if you are taking on uh, or you are raising different else's, be careful. It's a, it's a form of credit, but looking at the series four, it could cost you. So look at your business, what you are doing, and um, decide what you want to do. Sorry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes. Um, when you say if you have a foreign currency loan, you, mm. you have to pay. Yeah. What if you can't pay? What, yeah, so, what is the <laughs> yeah, so what I mean is if you don't pay it now, if you don't pay it now, then the rates may appreciate. The one dollar becomes stronger. You have to get more CDs to pay. Mm. No, I get that, but as a bank, collectively, is there is there anything you are doing to help the companies? Because if you took a loan, say five years ago, and you have ten years to pay, and now the rate is just skyrocketing. You mean in a foreign currency loan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you have to approach your bank and convert it to CD. Wow. Okay. That's what I want. Convert it to CD. If you, have, if you have, have a foreign currency loan now running. I would advise that you approach your bank and convert the city. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, Mr. Quanta, I will take the, the final word from you and let me do the curtain down here. Yeah. Okay, so um, it's been a pleasure talking to you and engaging you as well. Um, SMEs are a group of uh, businesses that CBG cherishes a lot. And so we've focused on SMEs for the past three or four years when we started. It's, it's, actually an area that we got a lot with over the years. And we've introduced several products, um, smart loans, um, export pre shipment LPOs, invoice discounting, and we have supported a lot of SMEs when it comes to these products. And we will keep supporting MSMEs. What we realize is that um, a, number of you, a number of the SMEs sometimes uh, don't keep proper records or don't bank their sales. And so we are, we'll be on the road, we'll be on a capacity building mission, engaging our customers from the north to the south to educate them on the need to keep proper good, uh, proper records and also bank your, uh, your sales. It is very important to have a banking record, but not just keep the money under your pillow and walk to the bank and say, oh, give me a give me loan. You need, to, you need to create a record. You need to create a credit history. You need to create a banking uh, history or banking records in order to, to be part of the banking population or to access facilities. And that's what then we see as hindering most of our SMEs in accessing the loan. So I will plead with you to always uh, bank your monies create a banking uh, trail, keep proper books. Keep proper books so that you can know your profits. Most SMEs are working, but they can't really, really establish a profit. So they end up losing capital or losing money and not knowing what to spend and what not to spend. So I'll play with you as we leave, as SMEs, let's continue to build capacity. We will keep engaging you. So anytime you see a program other than my SCBG, I'll urge all of you to be present, and uh, we believe 
we can support more SMEs in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kwanza. Thank you so much. Michael Kwanza, he is General Manager, Business Banking, CBG, and Mr. Eric Afram, Acting Director, Finance Support Services at the Ghana Enterprise Agency. A round of applause for our distinguished guests that are here, <laughs> providing answers for all of us and all the rest. Let me get online to Sophie, if I can give you about just two minutes uh, to give your final words uh, to us, please. Okay. Um, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you to CBG and the UK GCC for organizing this very uh, necessary event. Thank you for the candid feedback as well from the audience because it's it's when we table the issues indeed that the issues get addressed. Uh, on behalf of Oakwood Green, we have not yet started, but we plan to start uh, the accelerator, which will tie into financing as well. We look forward to being another avenue that presents opportunities for the MSMEs in, in Ghana and, and beyond to, to access finance and, and the increase their production. And, uh, with that said, now we will certainly uh, let the ecosystem that SME or MSME ecosystem know that we have started work. So with those few words, thank you very much and the very best of luck and I hope to see you soon. Good day. Thank you so much and uh, greetings to everyone in uh, Kampala. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, immense thanks to Michael Kwanza, General Manager Business Bank in CBG, and Mr. Eric from Asiedu, Acting Director of Financial Services at the Ghana Enterprise Agency. And also to you, the audience, you've been a wonderful audience here. So a round of applause for yourself as well. We are indeed within time, and I appreciate all of you. And the UKGCC say thank you so much. And I know that this is not just the last of the event. I mean, several ones are going to come. And also, there's another opportunity for us to network after this event. And just like one lady said, there are other, other officials here from CBG as well. Uh, maybe you take opportunity to uh, open some account or get in touch with them. So you benefit from the top up, as you said. My name is George. I feel I've been your MC. Have a great day. And let's meet somewhere. And let's chat. Thank you.